Now, here's why nobody wants to live to be 150, okay? All right, no, seriously, and I don't mean to be mean to these people. The lady, if you can pick which one is the lady, is 117. She's dead now, God bless her. The man's 114, okay? Nobody wants to live like that, okay? And that's pretty much what aging looks like for most people who get past that. So most of us, again, are much more interested in health span, but what if 115 looked like that? That's not so bad. These people are probably in their late 60s, early, maybe late 60s, I would say, maybe even early 60s. If that's what 115 looked like, how many people would want to live to be 115? Okay, what the rest of you want to look like? Uh, <laughs> Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, okay. Well, I, I got some stem cells for you, okay. <laughs> especially from Angelina and Brad. Uh, now, I want you to remember this word, the telomere, because if you want to make it happen like this, you're going to have to do something about these things. The telomeres are the little chunks at the end of your DNA that we used to think were junk. They are the biologic time clocks. They are directly responsible for how long your cells can live. They are directly responsible for almost every cellular mechanism in, your, in, your, in the cell. Anybody hear the mitochondria? Who knows what a mitochondria is? Okay, powerhouse, right. There's a mitochondrial theory of aging. Sorry, it's wrong. Telomeres, telomeres reset the mitochondria, and I'll show you all that, and I'll, I'll tell you about all that. Some of you in this room are going to be looking like this. A significant chunk of you, as a matter of fact, it won't be uncommon at all when you're 115. Some of you will make it to what we call the genetic hayflick limit, and let's have somebody ask me that in the Q&A, and uh, what that means, and that would be about 125 years, and some of you are going to reprogram your DNA and live 150 years, 160 years, 180 years, 250 years, maybe forever. Sound like science fiction? No. It's not. It's here, and you can start it right now, and you should start it right now if you're interested in this kind of thing. If, if it appeals to you to be 115 playing ball with your great-great-grandchildren. Imagine, I mean, can you imagine what the world would look like? Everybody thinks, oh, all these old people running around. That's because they're thinking about these people. What if all the old people were like that? What a pain in the ass they'd be to their kids. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to go out and get, mm, I won't even say the word. <laughs> Dad! Mom! You know, starting new careers, educating people, teaching the young people, being, you know how mellow you get when you're 150? I mean, let's face it, we all, most of us have gotten, I'm pretty mellow now compared to the way I used to be. I used to be a mixed martial artist, I used to fight and used to do all that. But I don't even have any interest in that except watching it on TV, okay? So, I mean, the point is this. A lot of you are going to make it. A lot of you are going to make it past, and some of you are going to make it past the genetic limit. Funny story. Ten years ago, anti-aging conference in Las Vegas. Some of these conferences that are run by doctors are really hokey, okay? There's a guy walking around. He's got bones, and he's got jingles, and he's got fancy robes. And he's running around saying, I can reprogram your DNA. And he pulls some powder out of his eye and throws it on the person. He comes over to me and he says, I can reprogram your DNA. I'm like, no, you can't. <laughs> Nobody's touching my DNA, pal. <laughs> Especially you with your fish bones. No, no, no way, okay? Well, and he claimed to be a shaman. Well, I, I, don't, I think he was nuts, but he was right. You can reprogram your DNA. I was wrong. Now, I, he was right for all the wrong reasons. I'm sure he had no clue about this, because I didn't. And I was wrong for all the right reasons. But we are genetically programmed to die at about 125. That's the most we can get out of our genes. But the immortality gene is in every cell that has a nucleus. It's there. It's turned off. Okay. Anybody want to find out how you turn it on? <laughs> I, I thought you might. All right. Well, I got to torture you with some more science first because some of you don't know what a telomere is. A telomere is something that is at the end of every chromosome, and I'll show you a chromosome, and you only get a certain amount of this, and every time your cell replicates, which cells are replicating and you, and you, and you, and me, probably a million times a day. And every time those cell replicates, that telomere segment gets a little shorter, and we walk a little closer to death. Now, I happen to be doing a lot about it, so, and I have some blood tests that suggest very clearly that that's not happening to me. But the point is, that's what's considered natural, okay? It's the biologic time clock. 
It tells you how much time you've got left in your cells. And remember, when I talk about cells, even though I'm talking about molecular biology, because this is an inside out part of the conference instead of the outside in, you know, where you do stuff and you listen to stuff and, you, and it, it reprograms things in you. This is something that you do from the inside out, okay? But it happens in huge numbers of cells at any given time. Your cells are dealing with the slings and arrows of everyday life. Some of them you know about, some of them you don't, okay? Over in Japan, do you think their telomeres are getting shorter? Yeah, how about it? Okay, the telomeres are the red parts at the end of the chromosome. Notice a couple things. Number one, and you'll see this slide again. The red parts are small. <laughs> There's not a lot of them. And the purple part, or blue part, depending on if you're colorblind or not, uh, the pur that purple part is all your genetic material. All right? So just remember that little piece of redness at the end of your chromosome is your key to longevity. That's where it happens, folks. These people, again, this science is not backwater pseudoscience. These people were awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 2009. Elizabeth Blackburn, Joe Stostak, Carol Greider, I want to personally thank the three of you for the incredible work you've done in creating the new science of longevity, along with my co-authors and another person I want you to meet, Bill Andrews. Bill Andrews discovered the human telomerase gene. He was the one that found the gene, the longevity gene, the immortality gene, the thing that turns back on your telomere's ability to lengthen itself and reverses the biologic aging. William Andrews. He also did a lot of other amazing things, and I've had long runs and workout sessions and lunch with Bill, and uh, he's an amazing guy. I wanted you to see him because you're probably going to hear about him again. I'd be very surprised if you didn't. So yeah, I had a lot of help. All right, two things you can do and should do to take care of your telomeres. You guys got it by now? This is a telomere talk? <laughs> okay. All right. First, you can slow down the aging process by slowing down the loss. That is very, very different than adding length. Okay, adding length is reversing the aging process. You're going to hear me use the words phenotypic and genotypic. Phenotypic means how a cell or a person acts and behaves. Genotypic is the genetic expression, what genes are read and what genes aren't. And when we get into epigenetics, who knows what epigenetics is? Some of you. Well, it's, this is a new hot field. Okay, this is where I'm headed next. Epigenetics, okay, allows you to modify your genetics, to reprogram your DNA, just like the crazy shaman with a powder from God knows where. All right? So you want to slow down the loss of your telomeres so that you don't pay the price for replication. Okay? And you want to add length so not only do you not pay the price for replication, you actually can replicate all you want. <laughs> okay? And your cells will stay young in the process. What causes aging? Now, this is a busy slide. Let me sum it up for you. Aging is essentially an imbalance between damage and repair. There's damage going on in our bodies right now, the slings and arrows of everyday life. And, of course, you can accelerate that damage. You can drink, you can smoke, you can be sedentary, you can get illnesses and diseases, you can eat poorly, you can do a lot of things to accelerate that damage. But even if you did everything perfectly, which would be something like have the world's best genetics, sleep eight hours a night, have as much sex as you want, have as much money as you want, have as many, yeah, you're the guy shaking his head, yeah, you like the sex part, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so anyway, aging outstrips the damage process. So when you're young and juicy, and you have long telomeres and happy, healthy mitochondria, it doesn't matter pretty much what they throw at you, you can repair it. The equation is tilted to repair. You've got lots of repair reserve. And then you get to be a little bit more middle-aged, and you approach parity. You know, parity is zero. Parity means repair equals damage. Now, notice damage didn't go up any. Repair went down. And then, at some point, <laughs> you step over the line, and repair becomes less than damage. And then you accumulate damage you cannot repair. That happens when your telomeres get short. Now, some of you are wondering about stem cells. Stem cells are somewhat telomere dependent as well. And when you damage your body and you normally chew things up, you have to replace them. And that replacement process is done by the local cells 
So if you go out on a bender and you, nobody here is going to do that, okay. Let's suppose you drank too much tonic. <laughs> And you got a little liver toxic because you took a higher dose of mushrooms than you were supposed to, okay? That never happens. And uh, your liver cells, you knocked off a million liver cells. Well, the other liver cells in the area will replicate to make up for that. And in the process, you'll lose telomere length in those. And sometimes they'll call on the National Guard, which is the stem cells, and they'll come in. And they'll replicate as well, and they'll make up for that other things. What have you done? You've aged the rest of your cells, and you've used up some of your stem cells, your parts bag. Okay, so it's good not to have to repair things. Or it's good to keep your cells young so they can repair without having to call in the stem cells or be, uh, suffer the consequences of damage. So essentially aging is when the fulcrum swings over to damage as opposed to repair. You all with me?